Welcome to the Philippine Motor Show. This is Auto Focus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here's a menu of some of our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market. A hatchback from Honda, the Jazz RS 1.5 Navi CVT, and an MPV from Maxxis the G10 1.9L 9-seater DSL Automatic. Plus, a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two hybrid vehicles, the Hyundai Ioniq GLS 6-speed DCT and the Toyota Corolla Altis 1.8 CVT. On Autopedia, we'll talk about reading and understanding a dyno chart. And together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the global launch of Nissan Aria as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus and we'll be right back after this short break. Be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020-2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now! The Mitsubishi Mirage. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Honda. The Jazz has been one of Honda's better-selling vehicles for its sporty hatchback styling, powerful and efficient powertrain, as well as its practical and utilitarian capabilities for a subcompact. Now that many young professionals and frontliners are looking for practical, yet affordable vehicles for safe personal transport in the new normal, the Jazz is a good sporty option. Carby takes a look at the top-end variant of Honda's subcompact hatchback. The Jazz RS 1.5 Navi CVT. Since its introduction back in 2001, the Honda Jazz has always been perceived as a sporty yet practical hatchback. A hot subcompact hatch with a roomy interior, more than generous luggage or cargo space and rev-happy engine and nifty handling. The latest generation Jazz manifests the sporty reputation with sleek character lines and grooves. This is specially emphasized in the Honda Jazz RS 1.5 Navi CVT, which gets the full RS or road sailing concept treatment. From the RS design front grille and front bumper lower grille, the front and rear bumper, to the tailgate spoiler. The RS treatment added a few millimeters to the overall length of the Jazz RS, which now sports the following dimensions 4,035 millimeters long, 
1,694 millimeters wide and 1,524 high with a wheelbase of 2,530 millimeters. Aside from the RS treatment, the Jazz RS boasts LED headlights and guide type daytime running lights from fog lamps, turn signal lights on the black power folding side mirrors, LED tail lamps, and high mount stoplight, chrome trunk garnish, a rear micro type antenna, a side sill garnish, and body color door handles. Also differentiating the RS Navi from other Jazz variants are the 16-inch gloss black aluminum alloy wheels wrapped by 185 by 55 R16 tires. Powering the Jazz is a 1,497cc single overhead cam 16-valve four-cylinder engine with chain drive and program fuel injection and Honda's iVTech technology. This Euro 4 engine generates a maximum 120 PS at 6,600 revolutions per minute and 145 Newton meters of torque at 4,800 RPM. Power is transmitted to the front wheels via Honda's Earth Dreams technology continuously variable transmission. Stopping power comes from a brake system using front ventilated discs and rear drums. The Jazz suspension system features independent McPherson struts with stabilizers in front and H-shaped torsion beam with stabilizer in the rear. A smart keyless entry system makes getting into the Jazz RS a breeze. This also comes with push-button start. Inside, one finds a roomy cabin with well-cushioned seats upholstered in sporty black fabric with orange stitching, as well as a black console panel with soft pad. Five full-size adults will find it comfortable inside the Jazz. The front seats have adjustable headrests and slide and recline with the driver getting added benefit of adjustments for height. The rear seat features what Honda calls ULTR Tech for utility, long, tall, and relaxed mode, and also comes with adjustable headrests. The rear seats can be folded and configured to accommodate odd-sized cargo of various lengths and width. Driver can adjust seat and three-spoke leather-wrapped and orange-stitched steering wheel, which tilts and telescopes for his preferred driving position. For comfort and convenience are controls for audio, Bluetooth hands-free phone on the steering wheel, as well as paddle shifters. Other comfort and convenience features include power windows and power door locks, front and rear windshield defogger, seven bottle holders, sun visors with vanity mirror, map and dome light, a 12-volt accessory socket, automatic air conditioning with touch panel controls, and a center console with armrest. The audio system comes with a 7-inch touchscreen with Bluetooth, USB and HDMI connectivity, navigation, and six speakers, including two tweeters. Honda filled the Jazz RS with passive and active safety features. All five occupants in the car get three-point ELR seatbelts. There are dual airbags for driver and front seat passengers as well as side airbags and side curtain bags and door beams. Child safety is not forgotten as the Jazz comes standard with child safety lock and ISOFIX child seat anchors. Honda also lists anti-lock brakes, electronic brake force distribution, vehicle stability assist, hill start assist among Jazz RS's safety features. Making parking the Jazz a breeze is a multi-view reverse camera. An alarm system with immobilizer complements the smart entry system. The Honda Jazz should help the auto industry recover from the slowdown in sales brought about by the lockdown and the pandemic's effect on the economy. The latest auto industry news and developments 
right after this break. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Welcome back to Autofocus. We now have the latest auto industry news. Toyota has given the Vios, its best-selling car, its latest set of upgrades. A glossy black front grille, three-tier LED headlight, and daytime running lights for G-Variant, which also gets 16-inch alloy wheels and LED rear combination lights. The Vios is uh, truly an upgrade. It, it looks a lot a lot better and uh, because of the change in the front fascia because of the new led light so we think that and we believe that anyone who gets attracted to it and purchases it would be leveling up in terms of their drive by uh, owning the vios other g upgrades include smart entry and push start paddle shifters as well as drive modes, Echo and Sport for the G CVT variant and back camera. The G, E and XLE variants all get LED fog lamps too. They also come with SRS airbags, anti-lock braking system with electronic brake distribution plus brake assist, vehicle stability control and hill start assist control. Buyers also get the option to choose to have 3 to 7 SRS airbags for some variants. Meanwhile, Toyota Motor Philippines offers 12 Vios variants to meet all possible need or budget. From the base MT model priced at 671,000 pesos, all the way up to the GCVT priced at 1,071,000 pesos for the white pearl or 1,056,000 pesos for the ones in other special colors. Being a locally assembled vehicle uh, is already in itself helping drive the economy ever since, not only during this pandemic, but whatever vehicle or for each vehicle that we are able to sell would mean we're helping thousands of uh, team members and their families. Buying Filipino-made products would uh, be your share in reviving the economy again and hopefully we can recover sooner. Uh, than what we are anticipating or expecting. Mitsubishi has bulked up the Strada pickup and dubbed it the Athlete. The Strada Athlete sports black dynamic shield, black front bumper garnish, 18-inch black alloy wheels, black roof, styling bar and side decal accents that match a new two-tone interior finish. We are very excited to introduce the Strada Athlete here in the Philippines. Its robust and sporty design best represents the capabilities of our truck, said Mutsuhiro Oshikiri, President and CEO of Mitsubishi Motors Philippines Corporation. With 40 years of truck engineering heritage, the Strada has been refined to become a well-balanced road warrior that does not only conquer rough terrains, but also provides advanced technology, comfort and safety to its driver and passenger, he added. Mitsubishi has signed up Brandon Vera, one heavyweight champion, as brand ambassador for the Strada athlete. For us, Brandon Vera best represents the Mitsubishi Strada athlete as his characteristics reflect the very definition of a true athlete, said Mark Parulat, 
MMPC Brand Communications Department head. Apart from being a successful world champion in mixed martial arts, Brandon is considered a role model by many followers of the sport because of his discipline, attitude, and dedication to the best version of himself. Like the Mitsubishi Strada athlete, the newly enhanced pickup variant of Mitsubishi Motors designed to contend with the very best trucks available in the market, he added. The Nissan logo is undergoing another change. This time, the redesign is meant to signal the evolution of Nissan as not only a traditional vehicle manufacturer, but also an innovative provider of mobility and services in a digitally connected world. The new Nissan logo is first seen in the all-new all-electric Aria crossover, which Nissan debuted in an online event viewed all over the world. As the new icon of Nissan Intelligent Mobility, designed to fully embody the three pillars of intelligent driving, intelligent power, and intelligent integration, the Aria is not only fitting, but was also a key influence on the tailoring of the logo, said Nissan. The Nissan Aria is our latest electrified vehicle packed with advanced technology, said Alfonso Albaiza, Nissan Motor Company Senior Vice President of Global Design. It's the perfect platform for this new logo. Geely Philippines reports a great June for sales for the local distributor of Geely vehicles. The Geely Cool Ray was the best-selling five-seater subcompact crossover in the month of June with 154 units sold. Based on the latest reports of Chamber of Automotive Manufacturers of the Philippines Incorporated and the Association of Vehicle Importers and Distributors Incorporated, Geely Philippines also reports it ranked 10th in total sales for the month of June, selling a combined 184 units of the Cool Rain and the newly launched Azcara, a company record for total monthly sales. It added that it had sold 549 units in the first half of the year. This is definitely a very positive development as every auto brand tries to bounce back during this post-ECQ period. We are very delighted of this outcome since it is mainly driven by one model, the Cool Ray, and only one showroom located in North Edsa, said Sojits G Auto Philippines President and CEO Mikihisa Takayama. We expect Geely sales to improve further as we open new dealership outlets and further complement our product lineup this year, he added. GAC Motors has added another dealership to its roster. Legado Motors Incorporated, official distributor of GAC Motor in the Philippines, announced that it has signed an agreement with Masa Mart Business Center, headed by Jesse Royo, to open a GAC dealership in Quezon City. GAC Quezon City is the newest dealership of GAC Motor in the country. The others are located in Pasig, Las Piñas, Alabang, Pampanga, Tarlac, Imus, and Cebu. GAC Motor Quezon City will be offering the following models. GA4 sedan, available in 1.5-liter manual, 1.5-liter automatic, and 1.3-liter gas turbo automatic. GS4, subcompact SUV. GM8, premium 7-seater minivan, available in GT and GE Premier variants. GS8, large SUV, available in 4x2 GE Premier, 4x2 GE Sports, and 4x4 GL variants and GS3 subcompact crossover, available in 1.3-liter gas turbo, 1.5-liter Premier, and 1.5-liter GS. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We shall take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. 
We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020-2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now! Welcome back to this edition of Autofocus, the country's premier automobile TV and online magazine. Here's our feature-to-feature -feature comparison of the latest automobile models, belonging to the same category on Head to Head. It's been two months since Metro Manila began easing itself from a two-month lockdown we just seen the air over the metro clear because cars, too, were locked down. With more vehicles on the road, many fear smog and pollution will again dirty the air. But automakers have also begun offering hybrids into the local market. Head-to-head -head compares tools that are among the more affordable, the Toyota Corolla Altis Hybrid and the Hyundai Ioniq Hybrid. Toyota was among the first automakers to offer a hybrid model in the world market with the Prius. Built from ground up as a vehicle with a hybrid powertrain that combines an internal combustion engine with a battery-powered electric motor. Over the years, the Japanese automaker also began rolling out regular models but with hybrid powertrains. One of these is the Corolla Altis 1.8 Hybrid CVT, which Toyota has made locally available. South Korean car maker Hyundai has also heavily invested in research and development of electric powered as well as hybrid vehicles. One product of this R&D is the Ionic, which has been developed and designed to be offered as a hybrid, hybrid plug-in or as an electric variant. Hyundai shipped the Ionic 1.6 GLS 6-speed DCT hybrid to local shores. The Toyota Corolla Altis is classified as a four-door, five-passenger compact sedan that is 4,630 millimeters long, 1,780 millimeters wide, and 1,455 millimeters tall, with a 2,700 millimeter wheelbase. The Hyundai Ionic Hybrid is listed as a five-passenger, five-door subcompact hatchback that is 4,470 millimeters long. 1,820 millimeters wide and 1,460 millimeters tall with a 2,700 millimeter wheelbase. The Corolla Altis Hybrid maintains the classic timeless sedan design and shares much of the exteriors its brethren powered by regular combustion engines. It comes with bi-beam LED headlights with manual leveling, LED line guide daytime running lights, LED front fog lamps housed in chrome plating, gloss black lower chrome grille, auto rain sensing intermittent wipers, chrome door handles, window sash blackout with chrome plating, full LED rear combination lamp, and rear glass printed antenna. The model can be distinguished by its 17-inch machine finished aluminum alloy wheels wrapped by 225 by 45 R17 tires. It rides on a suspension system that uses McPherson struts with stabilizer in front and double wishbones with stabilizer in the rear. The Hyundai Ionic Hybrid features the wedge shape with high chopped rear design 
common to most hybrid sedans, but a rather coupe-like aerodynamic silhouette or profile allows Hyundai to claim lowest in class coefficient of drag. The Ionic exterior also has Hyundai's distinctive trapezoidal grille, projector type headlights, daylight running lights, side mirrors with turn signal lights, rear spoiler with high mount stop lamp, and LED rear lights. It rolls on 17 inch alloy wheels wrapped by 225 by 45 R17 tires. The Ionic suspension system features McPherson struts in front and multi-link system in the rear. The Corolla Altis hybrid powertrain combines a 1,798cc VVTi four-cylinder DOHC 16-valve engine capable of producing 97 horsepower at 5,200 rpm and 142 newton meters of torque at 3,600 rpm and an electric motor with a maximum output of 71 horsepower. Toyota lists the Corolla Altis Hybrid's total system max output at 121 horsepower. The Corolla Altis Hybrid engine drives the front wheels via a continuously variable transmission with sequential shift. Stopping power comes from brake system using front ventilated and rear solid discs. The Hyundai Ionic Hybrid powertrain features a 1.6-liter inline-4 CVVT engine that generates 105 horsepower at 5,700 rpm and 147 Nm of torque at 4,000 rpm, and a permanent magnet synchronous motor rated at 43.5 horsepower and 170 newton meters of torque. The Ionic Hybrid uses a lithium-ion polymer battery with 1.56 kilowatt per hour capacity. The power is transmitted to the front wheels via 6-speed dual-clutch transmission. Controlling the Ionic power and speed is brake system using all-wheel disc brakes. The Toyota Corolla Altis Hybrid comes with the latest in comfort and convenience features. Smart keyless entry and push-button start, power windows, door locks, auto-fold rear mirrors with power adjust, automatic climate control, Drivers and passengers are spoiled for comfort in leather upholstered seats. The driver's seat electronically adjusts eight ways and features power lumbar support. The front passenger seat adjusts four ways manually. The interior uses a lot of soft touch panels and synthetic leather. On the door trim, the instrument panel, door armrests, and the rear console box. Real leather went on the shift knob and the steering wheel with tilt and telescopic adjustment. The steering also got switches and controls for the 7-inch multi-information display, audio, phone, voice, dynamic radar cruise control, and lane departure alert. Infotainment system plays CD, DVD, and MP3 and comes with portals of auxiliary, USB, Bluetooth and K2 audio enhancing technology, smartphone mirror for both Apple and Android, and six speakers. Adding to the drive convenience are three drive modes, Sport, Echo, Normal, plus an EV mode. The Hyundai Ionic Hybrid comes with a smart key with illuminated push-button start, Inside is a clutter-free and comfortable cabin with intuitive instrumentation and controls. It has seats for five with great headroom for driver who also benefits from powered seat adjustment and front seat passenger. The driver enjoys motor-driven power steering, tilt and telescopic steering column, plus audio remote, Bluetooth, and cruise controls on the steering wheel. Also standard in the Ionic Hybrid are powered door locks windows and side mirrors, full automatic air conditioning, front map lamps with sunglass case, and an infotainment system with 5-inch touchscreen with radio tuner and CD player. Toyota has generously filled the Corolla Altis Hybrid with cutting-edge safety and security features, starting with a complete Toyota Safety Sense package that includes the pre-collision system, automatic high beam, lane tracing assist, lane departure alert, and dynamic radar cruise control. Anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, vehicle stability control, 
and Hill Start Assist are included in the Corolla Altus Hybrid Package. It also comes with SRS airbags for driver and front seat passenger, side airbags, curtain shield, and knee driver side airbag. Three-point ELR seat belts for five, plus tether anchors, and ISOFIX for two. And the Toyota Vehicle Security System with alarm and immobilizer. Finally, there's a back monitor complemented by clearance and back sonar. Standard in the Ionic Hybrid are a host of active and passive safety and security features that include, among others, dual front airbags, side airbags, and curtain airbags, anti-lock brake system, engine immobilizer, and a rear parking assist system complemented by a rear camera with dynamic guidelines. Many believe hybrids and full electrics are the vehicles of the future. But these low emission and zero emission vehicles won't be seen in numbers on local streets until they become more affordable and accessible to those already ready to level up from the entry level automobiles. fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Illustrado restaurant, only for the foodies. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. Nissan has unveiled the Aria, its first all-electric crossover SUV, at a digital event in Yokohama, Japan, while the Aria manifests the pinnacle of Nissan technology and design. It also represents Nissan Next, its vision of the future of mobility. This edition of Special Feature looks into the future of Nissan now. The brand new Nissan Pavilion, a five minute walk from the headquarters of Nissan Motor Company Limited in Yokohama, Japan. The Pavilion is where Nissan showcases its vision for the future of mobility and its latest cars, and the venue for the world premiere of the Aria, Nissan's first all electric crossover. As the Aria is rolled out, the world sees a vehicle seemingly arriving from the future. 
a concept vehicle that has come to life and ready to be driven on urban streets and countryside roads. Every design detail, the thin headlights, daylight running lights, the shield replacing the front grille, the distinctive horizontal lines, the low, sleek roof line, steeply raked rear pillar, the one-piece blade for the rear combination lights, manifest what Nissan calls Japanese futurism, a design concept that marries the EV platform and aesthetics seamlessly. The Aria represents the next chapter in the Nissan transformation. As Makoto Uchida, Chief Executive Officer of Nissan Motor Company Limited, explained during Aria's global digital debut. Aria opens a new chapter in our history, starting our journey of transformation in our business, in our product, and in our culture. transformation is all about leveraging Nissan's core strength, electrified vehicles and SUVs, to meet the new demand for more electrified, autonomous and connected cars, the future of personal mobility. The Aria is also the first production model that represents Nissan's new electrified brand identity. A step toward the future will have zero emission electric vehicles with seamless connectivity and artificial intelligence or AI technology as standard features. Aria is a blend of our core strengths, EV and crossover expertise. What today's customer desires is a more productive, efficient, and connected drive. They want to do this in a partnership with technology. Aria delivers this without compromise, meeting their aspiration and practical needs. ARIA is summit of our strengths, an ultimate expression of Nissan intelligent mobility. It will not only set the direction for all future Nissan vehicles, but will be an inspiration. Another distinct change unveiled during the Aria Worldwide premiere is the new Nissan logo. Our new logo is futuristic while staying connected to the rich heritage of Nissan. Aria is the first car to showcase this new logo. It represents our spirit of innovation and our willingness to explore the new. The all-electric Aria also manifests the latest in EV, artificial intelligence, and digital connectivity technology, all combined in a package that is functional, intuitive, and aesthetically pleasing. Ashwani Gupta, Chief Operating Officer of Nissan Motor Company Limited, explains. Aria is a truly beautiful and remarkable car. It is the realization of the unrelenting passion of our engineers and designers who have poured their best into this vehicle to deliver something truly special. Aria will deliver more autonomy, more electrification, more connectivity to move people beyond and to a better world. Nissan will be offering four core versions of Aria, with two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive versions, with options for two types of batteries. All provide excellent power delivery, charging capabilities, and extended range. So we like to offer this vehicle to as many customers as possible. So we prepared four variations. So two types of a battery and then two types of a drivetrain. In combination, we have in total four variations. 
First one, a uh, two-wheel drive with the 63 kilowatt hour battery. And then customers who go to the long journey, we have a 87 kilowatt hour battery with the two-wheel drive. And then for customers who are looking for the performance, power, and excitement, we have a e force the four-wheel drive technology. Of course, we have two types of battery, 63 kilowatt hour and 87 kilowatt hour for the e force The Arya also arrives with the latest technologies making it a fully connected car. As John Snows, Alliance Global Director for Connected Car Services and Engineering shows how. We like to call it intelligent integration. It's a new way of interacting with your car from your home and it learns your preferences so it gets smarter as it goes along. From your home, you can even do something like set your journey, including a charging spot along the way so when you get to your final destination, you're fully charged. We introduced Amazon Alexa. Alexa, open Aria. Alexa, check my battery status. Battery status is at 31%. You can drive 160 kilometers. So you can do this all inside your house. Absolutely, inside your house. That way you know you have that comfort when you get inside your car. Inside of the car, we can either swipe or touch or pinch and zoom with where we want to go. What's also great is remember we've brought the home into the car. So now we have Amazon Alexa and we just say, hey Alexa, play my driving playlist. And it's really intuitive. You can control it with your voice. What's also great is when you get close to home and you can use your smart home devices that are connected with Amazon Alexa to do things like, hey Alexa, turn on my lights. The Arya also incorporates Nissan's latest driver assistance technology that points to future when AI technology will allow for autonomous vehicles. Arya comes with ProPilot 2.0 the newest iteration of Nissan's driver assistance technology that not only helps drivers stay centered in their lane, navigate stop-and-go highway traffic, and maintain a set vehicle speed and distance to a vehicle ahead, but also allows alternative drivers to take their hands off the steering wheel under certain conditions, reducing the driver's workload and stress in single-lane highway traffic. The Aria Crossover marks a new era for electric vehicles, and Nissan expects sales of EVs and e-powered electrified models to be more than 1 million units a year by the end of fiscal 2023. Nissan also aims to introduce autonomous driving technologies in more than 20 models in 20 markets, and to have sold more than 1.5 million vehicles equipped with these systems by 2023. The Nissan Ariya is a vehicle to aspire for, especially to those who like to continue seeing the mountain range behind the Metro Manila skyline that revealed itself after a week of the COVID pandemic lockdown. The Ariya should come sooner than later to our shores. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. 
Be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020-2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions. The WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has antioxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph. Welcome back. You have more cars for you to know and appreciate. So you have our second car review this week. The center of our second car review this week is a vehicle that made waves when it first arrived in the country. Simply for the fact that it's fresh and it's something that offers more than a typical MPV does. We're talking about the Maxus G10. Find out more about it here. Watch this. <laughs> Basing on the exterior design of the Maxus G10, it could be easy to say that it is just another China-built car, but not until you look closer. It exudes a modern and clean look, one that is fitting for an MPV. Up front, these projector halogen headlights take on the spotlight. In addition, front and rear fog lights are also present to provide more visibility for the driver when needed. Over at the rear, you will find a set of LED tail lights. Moreover, the dual sliding doors make it easier for passengers to go in and out of the G10. It's also worth mentioning that these sliding doors make the G10 considered as a minivan. Other exterior features of the G10 include front intermittent plus rear wiper, and electrically adjustable exterior mirror with side turn lamp. Pop it all off with 16-inch alloy wheels and the G10 is ready to go. Meanwhile, inside, being a 9-seater MPV, the G10 offers a generous amount of space for the passengers. For one, the four captain seats in the second and third rows are comfortable for the passengers to sit on during long drives across cities and rural roads. They are also available with recline and slide options. The last row, on the other hand, comes with a bench seat that can seat three passengers and is available with 60-40 configuration. These seats are wrapped in leather fabric material. More about the seats, the driver's seat comes in 10-way configuration, while the front passenger power adjust seats comes in 4-way. The interior of the G10 is likewise filled with features for added convenience such as cruise control, driver and front passenger power windows, front and rear reading lights, 220-volt power supply, and front and rear air conditioning system which keeps everybody cool and fresh during road trips. Four-spoke leather multifunction steer wheel is also available for the driver's convenience. For the infotainment system of the G10, a 7-inch touchscreen radio that's available with USB and Bluetooth connectivity. Sound is enjoyable through six speakers that wrap around the corners of the G10. Now let's take a closer look at what's under the hood of the G10. The G10 is powered by a 1.9-liter Euro 4 CRDI turbo engine that is capable of giving out 150 horsepower and 350 Nm of torque. 
the engine is mated to a 6-speed automatic transmission. Meanwhile, all the noises and vibration is handled by the suspension setup of the G10 comprised of a Pearson at the front and a 5-link coil spring at the rear. This setup makes the G10 ready for any condition. When it comes to safety and security, the G10 is loaded with features that ensure nothing less. Available safety and security features are anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, ISO fix, 3-point seat belt on all seats, front and rear parking sensors, reverse parking camera, immobilizer, and 6 airbags. The all-new Maxxis G10 9-seater is available at 1,680,000 pesos. That was all about the Maxus G10, a newcomer indeed, but not one to miss out. Our second car review this week. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Hi, this is Sydney from Speed Lab, and today I'm going to teach you how to look at a dyno chart, read and understand it. Spend enough time on the internet and online and you'll probably come across one of these when talking about performance numbers. This is called the dyno chart and this is the most effective and straightforward way to prove that something makes power or not when it comes to engine modifications. A dyno chart basically tells you how much power and torque your car makes. That's it. It's very simple. It does not tune, it does not add power, it does not do anything except measure the power, horsepower of your car. It's basically a glorified treadmill for the car. So in every dyno chart, there's always two axes. One is the x-axis, which is always the RPM of the car being measured. So in this case, it's a Montero, so it's from 2,000 to 4,300. Then the y-axis here has horsepower and torque. For the Dynapack dyno chart, they split it into two. But later, we'll review another popular dyno chart that you've seen, which is from DynoJet. So these lines represent the number of runs in one dyno session. For the Dynapack one, each file can contain up to six runs, which is represented by these six colors. We'll start with the horsepower side. Which that's what everybody keeps asking, and that's what everybody sort of understands a little bit more. The first run is this red line, which is almost always here the baseline power, which means car comes into the shop, nothing has been done, we put it here, we take a power reading of what it is. Whether it's stock or slightly modified, it's called the baseline because we haven't done anything yet. Then subsequent runs, obviously the expected is you should get more power, which is why you're having it dyno tuned in the first place or having modifications done. And this is our second run. This is. Uh, a historical one which we already did a few weeks ago with the uh, ECU reflash. So from here, you can see the peak power at stock is around 155, which is indicated here. This is our power after reflash, which is 181. Note that the RPM is pretty much the same, 3,400 RPM. So that's the correct way to compare power actually or anything. It has to be on the same RPM scale. Then this is what we did just now with a full exhaust installed. So we're up to 219 horsepower for this old 2009 3.2 Montero. Torque is the same way. You read the graph here. So with diesels, it always starts off high, then goes lower. But as you can see, we have a pretty big, almost 150 foot pound of torque increase here from 312 to 446. That's pretty big, considering, just for reference, your average 7.8 only makes 100 foot-pounds of torque. Most people always quote when they get into these internet arguments is, Oh, my car makes 100 horsepower because that's what the brochure says. You are only partly right. It's 100 horsepower at a certain RPM. Like for this Montero, when people ask how much power did you make? Oh, stop, we make 155 at 3,500 RPM. This is important because if you look at the chart here at the bottom, you're only making 120 horses at 2,250 RPM. This part and this part almost nobody mentions. And here, towards the end of the RPM graph, you're actually only making 
90 horsepower at redline of a diesel Montero. This is the number that everybody's most interested in, but this only tells part way of the story. Because here we have pr practically 155 to 218, that's about 65 horses. But at here, if we take these two points, it's actually closer to 60 horsepower. What you're most concerned about is the area in between the two charts that you're looking at. This one here. This is only one point, but you have to take the whole chart and the whole dyno as a whole. Same thing with torque. It starts off big, then gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as you go down to red line. So next time when you want to argue with your friends, you should always ask, okay, horsepower at something RPM. It always has to have that because power by nature is defined as work over time. Torque is the work that you're doing, the amount of force that you're giving. Power is time, meaning how much force you apply over a period of time. And that period of time is from 2,000 to 4,300 RPM. And the M in the RPM is minutes, so revolutions per minute. That's your measure of time. So power always has to have a length of time and the time component in between. It cannot just be, it's not a static thing like, oh, I make this much power now. Yes, and but what about a second later? What about five seconds later? Okay, that's for the dyno chart from a Dynapack. The Dynapack is actually a brand of dynamometer. The same way that you have an Orion brand ruler, you have a Century brand ruler, and a Stanley brand ruler. Different dynos have different brands, but they all measure the same thing. It's horsepower. And then this is another type of dyno. This is from DynoJet, which is you also see a lot on the internet. And this is their dyno chart. As you can see, it's also the same. You have RPM here at the bottom. You have power here at the y-axis. But you have torque here at the other y-axis. What they do is they intersperse it with each other. Same thing also, you can have multiple runs represented by multiple colors. So this is two runs. Uh, first run is red, second run is blue. So this is the line for power, these two. Then this is the line for torque. Same thing also, there's a pointer here that you can put here and the values here will change. Also, maximum power at, it will show you here, 180 and 146 mm, horsepower at this RPM here, at 6,000 RPM. Then it will show you also max torque, which is somewhere here at 5,000 mm, RPM. So once again, you read it the same way, power at RPM, torque at RPM. And as you can see, when you're only at 2,500, you're only doing about 20 horse, then it gradually gets bigger, 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 until red line. Same thing with torque, this is a gasoline engine, so your maximum torque is made somewhere here in the middle. So some torque, some torque, some torque, big torque, big torque, then torque drops off. Now, are there other brands of dinos in the Philippines? Yes, there are. If your car comes with a printout from one of these, it is unquestioned what the numbers are. Okay, so that's how you read a dyno chart, whether it's from DynoJet or Dynapack. And if you go to the Speed Lab Facebook page, I do post a lot of these things. This one, sometimes this one, because we do have a DynoJet also. And with the corresponding explanations, what these lines also mean. So yes, check it out, so you, you might learn a thing or two. That's our feature on Autopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this edition of your Automobile Electronic Magazine informative as well as entertaining. You can also check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.